Hi, good day, everyone. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us for a very special edition of our Lunch and Learn series, Getting Crafty with Conservation. Um, my name is Pauline Hine. I'm the Director of Philanthropy of SHC, the Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy. I'm so excited to have Lakaila Hodges with us, who is our Equity and Education Manager. And we're just going to spend a little time with you this afternoon, um, showing you some fun crafts um, that utilize um, some parts of conservation and nature. And we're really excited um, to share these activities with you. So take it away, Lakaila. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to kick off our first of three activities we're going to be doing, um, and that is making corn husk dolls. Um, this is something that is really fun to do uh, with people of all ages. And uh, I like to do it around the holiday season just because it's something that feels kind of festive. Uh, but technically, it's something that you can do year round. Um, and so before we jump into this craft, uh, I'm going to go over the materials we're going to use and then um, do a little reading about the history of corn husk dolls and their significance and kind of where they come from. So for this, we're gonna need five corn husks. You can buy these at a grocery store, like, you know, you make tamales out of them, um, or you can take them dried from corn at home or from the grocery store, or if you uh, go to any sort of mazes and things like that in the fall, uh, they often have some around. Um, before we get into the storytelling, you, if your corn is really solid, you might want to just drop it in some water um, for like a minute or two, just so it gets a little softened. Um, and we're also going to be using scissors and any type of string that you just have around the house. Um, so I'll let you all gather materials while I go over our little reading. <clears throat> so corn husk dolls, um, no one knows for sure when they came about, uh, but we do know that they originated in several different indigenous cultures around the United States. Um, and it's largely kind of believed um, that they're really closely related to the story of the three sisters. Just a little background on that. Three sisters are corn, beans, and squash, um, and you can grow them together and they work really well together from an agricultural standpoint uh, to grow really healthy. And they also have a little cultural significance, um, which we'll talk about a little here. So <clears throat> the three sisters, are very well respected sustainers of life. Um, they consist of the corn spirit, the bean spirit, and the squash spirit. And these three sisters were created by the great spirit. The corn spirit was so thrilled to be one of the sustainers of life that she asked the great spirit if there was anything more that she could do for her people. The great spirit told her that a doll would be formed from her husk. So she made the doll from her husk and gave the doll a beautiful face. Then the doll went from village to village and played with the children. Everywhere she went, everyone kept telling her how beautiful she was. So it wasn't long before she became a bit conceited. The great spirit called to her. But before that, she went to the great spirit's lodge and looked into a pool of water to admire herself. The great spirit talked to her and told her that if she kept thinking of herself as better than everyone, then a punishment might come upon her. Uh, but he wouldn't tell her what it would be. So the doll continued to go from village to village playing with children and everyone kept telling her how beautiful she was. It wasn't long before she became conceited again, despite the great spirit's warning. The great spirit called upon her and once again, she looked in the pool of water to admire herself before going into the lodge. Upon entering, the great spirit said to her, I've given you one warning and now a punishment will come upon you. But he didn't tell her what it was. When she left the lodge, she looked again to the pool of water to admire herself, but this time she didn't have a face. The great spirit had taken it away. And because of this, several different communities do not put a face on their corn husk doll as to remind people 
to uh, try to remain humble and be grateful for their gifts without being to, I'm sorry, uh, without being too conceited about it. And so this is, this story and a version of it um, can be found in several different um, books. Uh, there are lots of books that you can pick up that have traditional indigenous stories in them. Um, and it's something that um, you can tell to children and different family members to kind of just preempt this activity. And so um, that's a little bit about how these dolls came to be in terms of a folklore sense. And that is also why uh, they often lack faces. So to begin this craft, it's typically good to dump your corn husk into some water just to soften it up. If you use warm water, it usually works a bit better. Um, it helps to saturate it more and really soften it. And after you've done that, you can go ahead and count your husks out. So you should have five total. There's one, two, three, four, five. And five. So you're going to keep four in a pile and take your fifth and we're just gonna save that um, for a bit later. Um, I'm going to angle this down so you all can see my hands and what I'm doing with them. Okay. So we've got our four corn husks and you can see that they're kind of triangular shaped here and you want to put them all so they're facing the same direction with the pointed part um, up. And so you line them up and you do that. And you're going to come down about an inch and a half to two inches. And we're going to tie our first piece of string there. And we want to be sure to double knot it and try to get it super tight. And then you can cut off the extra so it doesn't hang out. So we've got that shape here. So after that, we're going to kind of try to spread it out a little bit and we're going to count two and two. So we've got one here and two. And we're just going to separate those from the other two. So once you've got the two and two separated, I like to hold two in one hand and two in the other. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fold them over that tie that we just did. Just like that. So sometimes this part is a good time to stop and look and see if you have enough space, depending on the, if you want your corn stall to be wearing pants or not, um, it's going to need to be a little longer. And so this end is gonna be your head and this is going to be the rest of the body. And so if it's looking a little short, you can come back on the inside and just move your tie up a little further. To give the body a little bit more length. So once you have that folded over, you want to pull it as far down as you can without making the tie slip off. And we're gonna do a similar thing. So you're going to come down just about an inch less than we did the first time. And we're going to tie another knot there. And this is going to be our head. And then again, you can double knot it 
And um, for every step here on out, you can wait till the end to cut them off. The first, it's best to cut it off at the beginning because if not, the strings might come and stick out of the side. So now that you've got this shape, we're just gonna set this to the side for a second and we're going to grab our extra corn husk. So this was, is going to be used for our arms. And so there are two ways we can do this. You can either roll it really tightly and that will make the arms um, much thinner and neat, or you can just kind of bunch them up a little bit and it makes it thicker. A lot of the kids say when you bunch it up, they look like scarecrows, like wearing like a, a blouse or a large shirt. So it's wider on the sides here. And once you have that bunched up, you're going to take your body and split that with two and two again in each hand and slide that through all the way as far as you can. And once that is up there nice and tight, we're going to take another string and tie it right beneath just to secure that. So you're gonna take the string, slide it up to be right under the arms and tie that nice and tight. And that's gonna help keep the arms from sliding out and keep them in place. Next, you can also tie a little string around the ends of the arms to kind of make a defined shape for hands. That part is optional, just depending on how you want it to look. So once you do that, you can either leave it this way, you can cut the strings, you can tie them in a bow. A lot of the students like to do that. Um, or in order to make legs or pants, you're going to take your two and two in each of your hands again, and you're going to split them off to the side like that. And then we're going to take our string again and tie them at each bottom. The ties on the hands are optional, but if you want it to have pants, then you have to tie at the bottom or else uh, as it dries, it's just going to come back together as one piece. So we're going to tie that one there and This one here. And then you have your doll. And so you can clean it up here at the end and just cut your strings off or make them short if you want to keep some on. And a final step that you can do that is completely optional because now you've got the shape of your doll and it's completed is you can take those leftover strings you have 
um, and you can use glue and attach them as hair if you want. Um, and you can cut it to whatever length you would like. And once these dry, not while they're wet, but once they're nice and dry like this, you can take any kind of marker and you can draw on them. So you could color in any color pants or shirt you might want. Um, but that's something that you have to wait for when it's dry because if you try to do it while it's wet, um, then the marker just bleeds and it, it runs everywhere and it doesn't really work out. But there you have your corn husk doll. It's really easy to make and inexpensive and they last for forever as long as you handle them with care and um, it's a nice easy craft to do. Uh, so now that we have that, I'm going to turn it over to Pauline so she can lead her next craft. <laughs> Mine turned out great. Thank you, Lakaila. <laughs> Smell it good? And I can already feel the stress dissipating. Um, these are very fun activities to do during this busy holiday season to just give yourself a moment um, and to get creative. So we're gonna go on to mine, which we're gonna be making some um, wind chime sun catchers, which I'm really excited to share with you all. I have three young boys. And so we love to do crafts. We love to get outside. Um, hike around and gather materials. So let me just show you um, what you're gonna need. Some mason jar lids, some string, some clear contact paper, um, and little bits of things you find in the woods um, and a marker. Um, one fun thing that we do at our house um, to collect our goods is we take cardboard and we put rubber bands around it. And then what that does is when you're out kind of hiking, you can stick all your little goodies um, into this board, um, which makes it really fun for the kiddos. So a little bonus activity for this. So um, I'm gonna move my screen down so you can all see what I'm doing. Um, the first thing, so I'm just gonna do one of these at a time for ease and time, but the first thing you're gonna need to do is cut out some contact paper. Um, and then what I like to use, and you can use any kind of tape, but I find that painter's tape actually works the best because it doesn't um, necessarily stick I'm on itself. Here, but you froze for a second there. Oh, okay. How about now? Oh, I wonder if it's my screen. Is that better? That's better. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll try to do this. Let me see. Does that make it, does that make it freeze? Uh, nope. It looks like you're fine. Okay. Now. I'm going to try My computer's a little tricky, so sorry about that, folks. Um, and so we're just going to kind of take some tape and tape down the contact paper. And like I said, I'm doing um, just one of these at a time to show you um, just for some ease, but you can really do as many of these as you want on the big um, piece of contact paper. And so um, we're going to take a mason jar lid and we're going to put it on the top there. And we're just going to trace around the outside of the lid. Doesn't have to be fancy because we're going to cut it around. So no worries if it's not perfectly straight. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to then turn this over and we're going to, again, this painter's tape is going to help us with that. Um, and we're going to peel the contact paper back. So we're going to do it. You want to make sure you know kind of where your sticky side is versus your non-sticky side. And I will tell you the one thing about this craft is handling contact paper seems to be <laughs> for me the most challenging part. Um, so there, let me go like that. Sorry, I should have done, done that and that. This is where the fun and the creativity really takes off. Um, all those little goodies you found in the woods um, is now what you're gonna wanna use to kind of decorate um, the wind chimes. So, you know, I found some little old flower leaves from my garden and some rosemary, mm, smells so good. And you can take these, you know, kind of create um, whatever kind of shapes you want. Um, when I had, a, when we were kind of doing this with the kiddos, we were taking these um, rosemary leaves and we were kind of making little sunshines, um, fun things like that. I have a piece of a money plant. That's kind of like whatever you want. You know, winter time's kind of a hard time for finding lots of flowers and things, but we do have still lots of green things in this region. I have a little bit of lichen. 
So whatever feels good, stick it on there. Now I will say while I was doing this, I did find it easier to use things in nature that didn't have a lot of depth to them. So I was using kind of these berries earlier and you may just wanna put one or two, but anything that has like some height on it, um, it doesn't make it as clear, but this is something you can just kind of practice with and do a bunch and then pick the ones that you want to do. So as you can see, I kind of have it all laid in inside my circle here. And then I'm gonna take the other piece of contact paper like I said, this contact paper is like the hardest part of this whole craft. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can do this. Okay, here we go. So you're going to take this contact paper and you're going to stick it on top. And then you're gonna really wanna press it down. And this is gonna get any kind of little bubbles out, anything. And you really want it to get to stick on itself. Spend a little extra time getting that nice smooth. And then see that? And we're gonna take it and we're just gonna cut along the circle. You may have to go back and recut it to really fit your mason, large, um, mason lid jar ring, um, but this is kind of what you get. And then you're gonna stick it in through the, the mason jar. And so this is a little bit big, it's kind of bubbling a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back around and just trim it a little bit. Um, and so that's kind of what you're going for is this kind of look. And then you wanna tie some string um, to the um, mason jar lid like this. And this is just the string that I had in my house. Um, if I were to redo this again, I'd probably find a string that's a little bit more coarse. This is a little bit more kind of slippery string. Um, it might make it hold better. So like that. And then you just pop in your contact paper and it should just stay as is. Now, if it's a little wonky, you can always add a touch of glue, um, but you may wanna reuse these mason jar lids sometimes. So this is kind of what we get. You wanna trim maybe this, this string up here and you can stop here. You can just, you can just make a wind catcher with just this um, or you can keep going. And what you're gonna do is add them to a stick and you just keep going until you have, you know, as many as you'd like. So it's very fun for kids and adults alike. Um, it's a great way to get outside of nature and find fun things. Um, while doing this exercise, I did realize that, you know, I know some people who love canning and um, all that may not be wanting to give up their, all of their rings. And so um, if you have any just kind of lids, I was thinking, you could, you could do this to kind of add into it. And if you've had Mod, Pod, Mod Podge, um, it's kind of a crafting glue, you could probably take some of that and put it um, on here. Um, and then maybe um, either poke a hole through this and put a string through it or glue a string and kind of add it to your wind chime. So just an option for those who don't have um, a lot of mason jar lids lying around, but kind of still want to get that wind chime sun catcher look, so. That's my craft for today. Um, go out and explore, find some goodies and make yourself some crafts. Um, all right, Lakai, I'm gonna turn it back over to you for our last craft this afternoon. All right, that sounds good. Um, so for our last craft, this one is pretty quick and easy. Um, this is something that I also typically do things like this in the fall, but can be used year round. We're gonna make some fire starters. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to make fire starters. Um, if you look on the internet and all of them typically include a toilet paper roll and some sort of paper and another form of kindling or something like that. So for 
the specific activity we are using dryer lint that I have been collecting in preparation for this lunch and learn. So um, I've got my toilet paper roll, I've got lots of lint and um, you can just use any sort of paper. Um, I save a lot of paper to use in a fireplace or to take if I'm going out camping or doing some sort of bonfire. Um, and so it's a nice way to kind of recycle everyday things that you use um, right in your home. So first we're gonna start with our toilet paper roll and our lint. We're gonna take some of your lint. This is also really good to do if you've washed things recently, um, like wool sweaters or cotton, things with natural materials. Uh, because when you're doing this, you wanna be careful uh, to be knowledgeable about what your clothes are made of, um, things like polyester and such, um, you know, that's plastic and nylon. And that is something you probably don't wanna burn too much of, if any at all. Um, and so that's just something to be cautious of. Um, and you can sub your lint in for things like cotton balls or just more paper if uh, you're washing a lot of clothes that are made of non-natural materials. Um, so you're going to take your lint and just break pieces off and stuff it in that toilet paper roll as much as you can kind of get in there. The more the merrier, the more you put in there, the longer it will burn. And once you have that packed nice and tight with a bunch of lint, you're gonna take your paper, I'm actually going to rip this on. Slide. And once you've got your paper, um, you can get any sort of shape that is kind of like a rectangle. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to place your toilet paper roll with your lint there. And we're just going to roll it up and fold in the corner some as we do that. And there we have it. So this, you can take string and um, loop it around to tie it and to keep it intact. But really I found that once you crumple the paper some, it really stays in place. And so you can take this and you can put it in the bottom of your fireplace and just light one of the ends and let it catch. Or you can take it with you on a backpacking trip or a day hike and light it and let that be a quick and easy little fire starter for you. It's also really lightweight. And so um, if you're going out into the forest and are going to need um, or want to make a fire and that's not necessarily your forte or it's been super wet, um, then this is a really lightweight, um, easy way to create your fire. Um, and it also you know, completely burns out. And so it doesn't leave any sort of um, waste or mess behind. So yeah, that's what we've got. Thank you, Lakaila, so much. Um, really appreciate you joining us today for some crafts. Um, I didn't know if anyone had any questions or thoughts they wanted to share before we sign off, but um, from all of us at the Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy, we wish you all the best this holiday season get outside, get some crafting on. It's really good for your mental, physical, spiritual health. Um, so thanks again, and we'll see you at the next, next Lunch and Learn um, in January. Thank you. Oh, wait, we have one question. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <one> question. <laughs> Thank you. All right, till next time, bye.